Hey, Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. Let's talk about how to start a web design business. If we learn anything in 2020, it's that businesses that aren't online are gonna have a hard time surviving. And that also applies to you as an individual. Not just that you should have a web presence, but you should take your web skills and start freelancing. Because if you're not creating side income and you're relying completely on a job, that could be taken away from you and you can go from a salary to zero income just like that. You might also think that it's too late for you to get involved. I've been working with local clients for 10 plus years now and they're so far removed from the online world. It's, it's hard to even understand their perspective if you're interested in building websites. There's more opportunity now than ever and frankly, they're gonna feel the pressure of what happened in 2020. So I think you need to take advantage of it as soon as you can and start building that base. So let's discuss how to be successful building a web design business. The first thing you have to do that I think is the most important, that's pick a niche. Pick an industry you wanna work with and stick with that. Because if you're trying to build websites for every type of business, you're not gonna to appeal to anyone. And on top of that, you're not gonna be able to standardize your process. That's gonna cost you time because you're gonna be doing custom work. It's not good to earn the most you can per hour or per project. You could be way more efficient if you stick with an industry, kind of use the same template for each one. You know, obviously you can customize it, make sure they're unique, but you don't have to be an A-plus level graphic designer in order to build a web design business. You really wanna understand the industry beyond just the web design part. Get to know the organizations and associations that are within that industry. Get to know how the industry operates and their sales process as much as you can, because if you do that, then the sales conversations become a lot easier and you really wanna position yourself as a marketing expert, not just a web design expert. It's gonna be easier to build trust if you're dealing with people locally. I think there's about an order of magnitude difference between meeting in person with somebody, speaking with them over the phone, and sending emails. You know, each level, there's a drop off with trust. That's why if you can actually meet someone locally, you're gonna be way more likely to land that job. You're gonna be able to build that relationship with them. And if there's anything I learned in 10 years of doing business, it's that it's all about relationships and building trust. It's a lot less about your skills. I think a lot of people try and outsource the sales process and that's really hard to do until you have a couple sales under your belt and you understand what works. You know, if you if you drive around within five miles of where you are, I'm sure you're gonna find hundreds of local businesses on Main Street, in office complexes. You can see home service contractors and their trucks, they're driving around, lawn signs. Take note and start being very observant when it comes to the businesses around you. Look them up, see if they have a web presence and see if you can help them. Most of their contact information is gonna be online if they already have a web presence. And if they don't, you're probably gonna be able to find their phone number and you might wanna jump on a call with them. But even if you have no experience, that local aspect is just gonna be able to build the trust from the jump and it should help you get your first opportunity. Now, here's where I think a lot of people make a mistake and they focus so much time on building a portfolio website. And this is again, the difference between going local versus trying to go global where people find you online. I think having a portfolio is a lot less important than most other people. I don't think a single one of my clients has asked about my portfolio. Now they have asked about other clients that I've worked with. So I think that the better route is to build a niche website template. And it's almost like a dry run. You can pretend it's a real client because a portfolio website is not gonna look the same as a local business website. Build a niche website and document your steps. Write them down so the next time you do it, you're gonna be even more efficient. Once you start talking to clients, you're gonna realize that when you stick with a the niche, they're gonna ask similar questions and have similar answers. I usually operate off of a client questionnaire that I put together, which I'll link up here in the top right if you wanna grab that and download it. I'll also link it in the description below. And ask them about their business. You don't just wanna stick with the website, like I said. Get to know as much as you can about how they operate. You're gonna, you're gonna be able to pull together a thread between all the businesses within that industry and understand the mistakes that they've made in the past. A lot of them have used a web designer or some company for web design and they're not happy with it. So see why that is. And in my experience, a lot of it just comes down to communication. Now here's one thing that clients don't care about and that's the design software that you use. If you know anything about me or have watched any other videos on my channel, you know that I advocate for WordPress. I've been using that really the entire time I've run a web design business. I've had, I've had people question me 
and say, do clients care that I'm gonna use a drag and drop theme? Or do clients care that I put them on my hosting plan instead of them having to buy hosting? They don't care about any of that. In fact, it's the opposite where if you make it as easy as possible for them where they don't have to know about that, they love that. So my preferred design setup is just using WordPress. And I like recommending Divi, which is a drag and drop theme like I just said. It makes it way easier to design faster and better. They have a lot of like pre-made layouts. And I put together an entire landscaping website using Divi, which I'll include a link to in the top right in the description if you wanna check that out. That's about, I think an hour or an hour and a half long tutorial. But if you're more comfortable using something like Squarespace, I think Squarespace is a good alternative. I've seen a lot of people just in local networking groups that I was looking at near me, they have a web design business where they use Squarespace. And the downside of that is Squarespace, as far as I know, they don't have a reseller plan where you can create unlimited websites. So you're probably gonna have to buy a package for each client. But that's another thing where you can kind of set that up however you want. It's your business, you don't have to worry about how it's gonna to appear to other people. Do whatever's easiest for you and your client. Get a few websites under your belt and you're gonna figure out what works best for you. The one thing I don't recommend is using custom code. And I got into websites by learning HTML, CSS, PHP. I started with custom code for my first couple client websites. And this goes back to them not really caring about that. When they wanted to make changes to simple text or image updates, it's a kind of a pain to do that if you have a custom coded website. That's exactly why I transitioned over to WordPress because I like their content management system. It makes it way easier to update posts and pages. That also is gonna help you out if you decide to outsource. You're not gonna to have to find a tech specialist. You can probably train somebody to use WordPress. Now, if you do wanna use WordPress, I have a couple trainings that I'll link up in the description below. Check them out and that'll get you up to speed if you're a complete beginner. Let's talk about pricing because this is another thing that holds people up. And it makes sense because like I said, if you do a DIY website, you could spend $5 or less per month. As a web designer, you're gonna wonder how can I charge way more than that when people have that option? And again, it goes back to local businesses being so far removed from the online world. It would take them 40 or 50 hours to even understand how to operate something like WordPress. On top of that, they would be completely frustrated and just wanna throw their computer out the window. So they don't wanna do that. They want an expert to help them out with it. And that's where you come in. They're really buying into you as a person. And that's what the, the majority of the value comes from. It's, it's your expertise. I've, I've had a lot of clients that get sales calls from some of these bigger companies. They always use fear-based tactics to try and get them to switch services. I often have to explain how things work and, and be honest with them because on a sales call, a big company's not gonna be honest. They have a salesman who has to hit a quota every month, whereas you as a freelancer, like I said, you're looking to build a relationship and keep that for as long as you possibly can. So when it comes to pricing, I have an entire video on that, which I'll link up, but I just wanna hit on a few basics. You can start with hourly pricing, project pricing, contract pricing, but what I've found is that any type of model where you're getting paid one time, it's gonna be very hard for you to create that sustainability in your business. You wanna build in recurring revenue however you can, and the way that I do it is I just don't take on clients anymore if they don't want that monthly management service. The other good thing about building that recurring income through monthly management is that it doesn't take that many clients to really add a significant side income to your bottom line. I just went through my yearly review and there was a couple interesting findings. The client who is paying me the least per month actually resulted in the highest hourly rate. That's because they are the type of client that doesn't bother me. You know, I, I contacted them or they reached out to me less than a handful of times throughout the year. We were on a higher plan. We renegotiated to a lower price and they're happy with it now. Every client's gonna value you a little bit differently. And if you don't push the boundaries a little bit, you're not gonna know where that cap is. I think it's funny because the client who has paid me the most money per month, I made the least amount per hour on that. And that is also my best client. That's my first client that I got 10 plus years ago. I made a lot of money from him over the years. And on top of that, he was the business that got hit hardest by the pandemic. So I just wanted to make sure that I was going above and beyond to try and help him out of that. And I wouldn't be surprised if this year that balances out a little bit. 
Another core philosophy of mine is that the simple fundamentals always beat out some type of complex strategy over the long run. This applies to sales. So many people just get dejected with sales because you're gonna get rejected by 90% of the people that you reach out to and they give up before they reach out to enough people to gain a few clients. Good communication is what sets you apart. That's another fundamental that most people don't follow through on. They're very bad at you know saying they're gonna do something and not following through. Most people are not organized. They forget things. You know, they, they don't create templates. You know, I went to school for engineering and I think the engineer mentality is that when you do something two or three times, you wanna figure out a way to either automate or create a, a process where you don't have to think about it. You can just roll through that. And I do that with pretty much every aspect of my web design business. I have a ton of templates, spreadsheets. That's the type of thing that compounds over the years. You know, it's, it's really hard to put it together, but once you have it, everything becomes so much easier. When you do these simple fundamentals, you gotta think about long-term value. It's not about getting the most in the shortest amount of time. It's about making sure that you're on the same page and you're building trust and building the relationship. And there's really no limit to what that can end up with, with one good customer. On the money side, you definitely want to get good at accounting. That's also not that easy. It took me a long time to even understand half the concepts with accounting. But the easiest thing you could do is just use accounting software to separate your business expenses from your personal expenses. I also have business accounts set up, bank accounts, credit card. I personally use QuickBooks desktop version, which is like eight years old, but it still works for me. And I started using that for another reason, which I'm not gonna go into. I wouldn't use QuickBooks nowadays. There's better options. A free one, at least I think it's free still, is Wave Accounting. And a good pay one is FreshBooks, which I'll link up in the description below. But I would say if you are unsure, go with an accountant. You know, it's probably gonna cost you a couple hundred dollars, maybe three to 400 max. And if you're using accounting software, it should be pretty easy to give him the information that he needs to do it. If you wanna give it a shot and do it yourself, the last couple of years I've done that using TurboTax. And it's, it's not that enjoyable of a process, but it's easy enough to get done. It usually takes me, you know, two or three hours. I'll end with, the fact that you need to have realistic expectations. Too many people, especially nowadays in the online business world, they push this idea that you're gonna go from zero to $200,000 in six months. And you know, for the average person, that's just not gonna happen. The first couple of years, there's a massive learning curve. You have to add so many different skills that we just mentioned, sales, accounting, marketing, getting better with the web design part if you're not an expert with that. It's gonna take you some time to become competent in all of these areas. You need to be kind to yourself and realize that you have to stick through those hard times. Don't give up in the first year. Don't give up in the second year. Start putting yourself out there. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. You know, the beauty of web design is that it's not that hard to fix something, you know, unless you completely delete a database or something like that. But, you know, if, if you have an error on a page and it's not working, it's not that big of a deal to, to go in there and fix it. And in my experience, Anytime you have a problem and a client notices it, if you're very responsive about fixing it, they love that. So it's almost better to make a few mistakes and let them know that you're on top of it and you're not the type of person that's gonna leave it out there. That's all I got for this video. Go to the description below. I got all of the links that I talked about in this video and you can download a one-page giveaway, 15 tools to start your web design business. They'll get you up and running. If you learned anything or this helped you out, Make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you have a great day.